All right, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna to be talking about the secret lair drops. If you didn't see this, um, it's old news. I'm not actually gonna be announcing it. I just wanna talk about how cool it is and how wizards can experiment with, you know, art and stuff with these little mini sets. So if you haven't seen these, these are little mini sets, like three to seven cards, I think, that you buy individually. So basically Wizards of the Coast is printing singles. I mean, they're like 30 to $40 and you get, you know, a small set of cards. So uh, they're basically reprinting singles for the most part. But what's cool about these is they have very extremely stylized art. So for example, look at these. This is the Kaleidoscope series, I think it's called. Um, yeah, the art is very, very weird. Not something that you would typically see on a magic card. And it's kind of interesting, right? Because, you know, this is allowing Wizards of the Coast to just do weird stuff like this without it negatively impacting the game. Like if you put this art in the actual game, people might complain because it's, you know, it's a little bit out there. And when you get to stylized art like this, you have much more visceral reactions. You know, people either really love it or really, really hate it. And, you know, another example of that is uh, the, the OMG Kitties uh, series. Um, yeah, this one would probably be a little bit controversial. Not controversial, like politically controversial, but I mean, like, people are going to be really into it or they're going to think it's completely stupid. I'm kind of in the latter. I mean, I don't... If I was going to buy a, a Leonin War Leader, for example, uh, needless to say, I would not be buying this, but, you know, it's cute. People might like it some people might not but these little secret lair things are allowing wizards of the coast to do stuff like this that's you know this would never be something that wizards of the coast could do in you know a regular set but now this can't exist and it doesn't negatively impact the people who aren't interested in it like so for me for example with this omg kitties one i'm not interested in this at all but it doesn't affect me because there's no way to get these cards without literally buying them individually you either have to buy them from wizards of the coast or you buy them on the second market these are going to appear in your packs it's not possible so it's cool that wizards of the coast has found a way to kind of experiment with art and allow different types of artists to make art for the game without taking away from the more traditional realism that exists within the actual game itself and some of these are really cool one of my favorites is the dredge series i think it's called the restless in peace series this art is amazing this is very me this is my style of art i love this stuff uh not so much the color scheme in this one but in art I typically like really high contrast. So like the Life from the Loam, for example, the birds are a perfect example of how they go from white to black and the tombstone also having really bright whites and dark blacks. And it makes the colors really pop. Like I love that. I love high contrast art like this. This is something that really appeals to me. So this is really cool, even though the, the green to purplish pink is uh, questionable. But I like this sort of high contrast art and I like, you know, lots of thick bold lines in my art. So this is really cool for me. I really like this. This is awesome. And that's what's cool about this is that Wizards of the Coast can create things like this that if you like it, then that's awesome. And you have this really cool option if you want this. But also if you see this art, for example, and you're like, wow, that's hideous. And it doesn't affect you. And that's fine. You know, if you don't like the goblin art, you know, the goblin art, it's pretty cartoony. Again, that's also not really my thing. If I'm buying a goblin king, I'm not buying this goblin king. I'm going to buy a regular one because I like the regular one better. But that's the point is, you know, this stuff can exist without it affecting those of us who don't care. So I like it. I see no reason to complain just because this is one of those purely optional, you know, doesn't really affect you if you don't want it sort of things. I think the only thing I don't like about these is they're not technically limited print. You have to buy them within a 24 hour period. So basically these are like drops, right? They're going to announce them. You have to be on it. You have to buy it right then and there. So they're cashing in on that, you know, you got to buy it now or it's gone forever kind of bullshit. Uh, I, I hate that, but you know, whatever. And every single person who orders it will get it but it only exists that day and then it's gone forever. So it's not limited in how much they will print. It's just limited in how many people will see it before it's gone. That's the only thing I don't like about this whole thing is the, the tactic to, you know, try to cash in on people's emotions and make people feel like they have to buy it now or they're going to lose it forever. And that's pretty lame. Don't like it, but whatever. Now, what's interesting from a financial perspective is Wizards of the Coast is basically printing singles, like I mentioned earlier. And that's relevant because because one of these secret lair things is literally just a bitter blossom. It's bitter blossom and four fairy rogue tokens. And they do have unique art. Each one is different. But Wizards is basically just printing bitter blossom. And what's interesting about this is this uh this secret lair thing is selling for $30. And the reason that's relevant is because the cheapest bitter blossom in existence right now is the ultimate masters one, and that one is $37. And this is $30. So it's $7 less. This is the cheapest print 
wanting a bitter blossom in existence you can get this bitter blossom for $30 so if you want bitter blossom not only is this art pretty cool I actually kind of like this I actually like this better than the ultimate masters art I don't think I like it as much as the original but I like it better than the ultimate masters one and it's full art so it's like it's a really cool addition and it's also really cheap but that's kind of sketchy for investors because uh it basically means that wizards of the coast can kind of print whatever they want whenever they want and that's that's probably scary if you're trying to invest in the game not so much for us as players for players it's great because we're getting a cheap bitter blossom so it's great for us but not so great for investors it adds some uncertainty for them if you've watched some of my previous videos you know i, I don't have too much sympathy for investors when they lose money i don't have anything against investors but i'm just i'm not sympathetic when wizard of the coast does cool things that come at the cost of investors like this i would much rather have this bitter blossom exist than have wizard of the coast say well we can't print that because that'll hurt investors eh, no screw it this bitter blossom is cool they're selling it to us for less than the secondary market price and it will probably lower the price of bitter blossom and it, to be fair it probably won't have that much effect because uh, i've said this in the past when wizards of the coast prints these sort of fancy special versions of cards people have a tendency to collect and hoard these more they tend to put them in binders and keep them not everyone of course plenty of them end up on the secondary market but there are more people there's a higher percentage of people who will keep stuff like this so not only is there less of them being printed but also there's more of them on average going into binders and staying there but it is pretty cool that wizards of the coast is willing to print into high prices and potentially lower them and not only do that but do it in a cool way with cool art and stuff like that it's, it, i find it interesting now you could complain that the price is too high because this bitter blossom one it's literally 30 dollars and you get bitter blossom and four tokens and that does seem pretty high it is it's cheap technically it's cheap compared to the secondary market price to be fair but it's like you know they could sell it for 15 they could sell it for 20 but obviously they're, they're trying to sell it for as much as possible you know it's it is what it is and i've also seen people complain that you know fancy stuff like this used to come in the boosters and now they don't now they're selling them just individually they've been doing that since guilds of ravnica with the mythic edition and stuff so yeah you know it's it kind of sucks but at the same time like i'm glad that it exists i'm glad that if i'm gonna buy blood gas that there is an option to you know get this cool blood gas i would actually potentially just buy this blood gas if it was close to the same price as a regular one because i think it's actually pretty cool i like it even these showcase borders from eldraine like i think it's really cool that if i want to go buy bone crusher giant sure i can buy the regular one or i can you know spend an extra dollar or so and get the fancy one and you know it doesn't hurt for that stuff to exist it's just a it's a cool optional thing and you know if you don't want to spend that much for it if you would rather buy as cheap as possible which i usually do i usually buy whatever the cheapest edition is of any card that i buy like 99 percent of the time but i think it's cool that they exist and that you know it's an option same thing with the spellbook borders you don't have to go and buy the fancy rest in peace but it's cool that it exists and i think it might be the last time i checked it was one of the cheaper uh editions so you know it's just cool i think it's cool uh people are complaining i've seen people complain about the omg kitties one because you know it, it's cute little kittens and that's not for everyone that's going to be true for any stylized art i personally wouldn't buy any of the the kitten ones because it's not really my art style i'm also pretty so-so on the serum visions art style you know they're cool but they don't really jump out to me as something that i would really really want and that's just the nature of stylized art you know it gets very subjective when it comes to you know art like this that some people are going to really like it some people are going to not like i mentioned earlier so people are going to get angry when they see the kittens one but at the end of the day you know it doesn't negatively impact anyone and it gives you a cool option if you want to go that route so i see no real reason to complain anyway i just wanted to talk about those i don't have anything else to add other than i just i think it's an interesting you know way to go about things and i kind of look forward to seeing what they do with this in the future because i assume there's going to be more and uh could be interesting i think it's interesting so yeah there you go guys that's all i have to say about it thanks for watching and i will see you in the next one